absolutely beautiful Essex countryside. Uh, it is a very remote location, miles and miles away from any A roads, and that's one of the secrets of its beauty. It's not about residents not wanting a prison. It's the huge mass-scale development in a totally inappropriate area. It hasn't got the infrastructure and we haven't got the workforce to support this. This is a 3D VR rendering of what the prison is expected to look like if allowed to go ahead. It is around a mile long, three miles around the perimeter and a massive 17 and a half metres high which will not only be seen for miles around, but will generate vast amounts of traffic along narrow country roads, through small villages, and across protected, single-width historic bridges. Uh, their plan is for two prisons, category B and a category C, both 1,750 prisoners strong, making 3,430 prisoners in total, and it would be the largest prison complex in the whole of Europe. I don't think any area can cope with two such prisons, especially one as rural and remote as this. Once the construction phase is finished and they've completed the perimeter fence, there's going to be a huge amount of light pollution, um, which is going to mar the views of the night sky for miles around, and will then have a negative impact on residents and wildlife. So why is such a large scale prison being proposed? Very large prisons are inappropriate and there have been plenty of comments uh, in Parliament and by other people such as the French indeed who have a similarly large uh, prison outside of Paris and they have said that they will never build such a big monolith again in the future because it's unmanageable. prison inspector um, and various other sort of prisoner governors association all think prisons are far more effective under a thousand capacity and spread out geographically to, to spread the burden and to ease access for families to visit but for some reason the MOJ seem to be flouting all the advice and guidelines they've been given over the last decade But if the Ministry of Justice decide to proceed with large-scale prisons in spite of the evidence against them, surely the location is key to its success? You know, the part of Essex that we're in uh, really has a road network which has been built up since medieval times and it hasn't developed very much because of the remoteness of the countryside around here. So putting a prison which is going to be one mile long, three miles around the perimeter, 17 and a half metres high, standing on a 300 foot high plateau in the middle of the countryside is, which is going to be seen for miles and miles and miles up along is just not going to work. MOJ said prison should be near where families can be supportive of them. This is not doing that. They're, they're failing their own guidelines. Building a mega prison of this magnitude on um, what was Wethersfield Air Base, it's a World War II site. It would be desecrated by this prison. And that would lead to a loss of natural habitats and change the character of the landscape. It would also turn Wethersfield and many of the surrounding villages into a commuter rat run. One of the key issues with the site of the proposed prison, previously a discreet World War II RAF base, is that it lies 18 miles from the nearest motorway and is not even accessible via an A-road, which isn't only a problem for the people living near the proposed site, but also for the inmates and their families themselves. It's a huge problem for the prisoners, the people, the inmates within it. Um, you're asking a huge amount of people to come out of an area to visit um, yeah, the family inside prison. So a lot of these prisoners we understand will be coming from London and it's really inaccessible. I mean, you think it's, a, if you're bringing like yourself and a young family, 
it's a huge ask to do a two hour trip each way like the cost and the an actual hassle for doing that it's just it's unfair on the families who are meant to be there to help their uh, partner rehabilitate and if you need to take public transport to access the site it's worth bearing in mind that the nearest train station is around 10 miles away with just one train an hour and the typically rural bus service for the area is limited and infrequent. And we believe that the only reason for the Ministry of Justice to pick a site like Wethersfield Airfield is because it's free. Um, it's currently owned by the Ministry of Defence who want to vacate there. Uh, there is no other good reason for putting a prison, let alone two prisons there. Yeah, it should be near infrastructure, it should be near, it should be accessible for those people who want to see the inmates, otherwise the chances of it Reoffending goes off goes off the scale, and if a, if a prison doesn't do its job of stopping people uh, reoffend, then no amount of money you spend on it is worth spending. So the location is absolutely key, and uh, I, you know you've got to feel sorry for the people. It's it's a nightmare getting to London from here. With no motorways or major A roads nearby, how will the local roads cope with the traffic associated with the mega prison? To one side of the proposed prison site is the historic village of Wethersfield, and to the other, the village of Finchingfield, often regarded as one of the most beautiful in Essex. Both villages are lined with listed buildings, which, because they predate mass-produced cars, mean narrow roads that cannot accommodate two cars side by side, let alone larger vehicles or HGVs. People know well enough there's it's gridlock at the worst of times, with single lanes narrowing down. Um, and if there's a burst water main, which there's one every month for the last six months, just in Wethersfield, the surrounding roads are just chaos and they reckon there'd be a, a tripling of traffic at peak times and a doubling all of the time. What about the benefits? Is there anything to be gained by having Europe's largest prison? The Ministry of Justice claim the prison will bring jobs to the area, but what does that really mean for the local community? So we are being told that when the MOJ talk about local, they're talking about getting resource from a, a 50 mile radius from the site. I mean that's just going to cause even more issues and accidents on these tiny tiny countryside roads and also increase you know all the carbon and emissions which is against all our policies. And just on top of that just just keeping staff retention on such a, a long commute is going to be a challenge for them. As well as being a low population rural area that already struggles to fill job vacancies Wethersfield falls directly in the middle of recruitment catchment areas for other local prisons, increasing the competition for staff. It hasn't got the infrastructure and we haven't got the workforce to support this. We've got a high concentration of pensioners and almost full employment in these tiny villages that surround the proposed development. Many agree RAF Wethersfield should be listed as a heritage site due to its historical significance and also feel this rural haven for wildlife should be protected. But with the threat of Europe's largest mega prison looming over the area, many are questioning the seemingly incongruent local planning policies. ECC want this area to sort of emphasise and amplify what it already has, which is sort of a beautiful landscape and and uh, you know nature and abundance but central government somehow want to override that and make their ambitions completely impossible to reach. In Essex County Council's Climate Action Commission they state transport is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions and is responsible for over a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions in the UK. For a county like Essex with landscape that is 72 percent rural this presents specific challenges. They also state that they have made urgent recommendations for ways Essex can help provide specific and appropriate approaches to decarbonisation for our rural population. Essex County Council want Braintree District to be one of the focus areas to become net zero, uh, carbon net zero by 2030. So how does building uh, a building structure, a structure be one of the largest building projects in the southeast of England? probably the most furthest points of any major strategic trunk road or A road, um, the two are completely incompatible. It's so rural 
uh, Braintree District has been labelled by Braintree District Council elements of it to be uh, an area of deprivation. Now, in some respects, we are. We have we have a poor access to services. We are we are remote, but the prisons are by certainly not a solution. So these rural roads have one of the worst pollution records um, within the county, and Essex has one of the worst records on other similar counties on in surrounding London. Um, and also this, this area has one of the worst crash rates per 1,000 inhabitants anywhere in the country. So for it to double or triple the traffic will only increase the pollution threefold. And a tripling of traffic, well that potentially could have a tripling of what was already the worst traffic incidents in the country. So <laughs> in some indices it will be pushing us further into deprivation and solving none of the problems that which they say that we have. So the question is, if the MOD who currently own and operate from the former RAF base don't pass it over to the Ministry of Justice as they vacate it, what other opportunities exist for the site? So what I'd like to see, and having spoken to a lot of people, what other people would like to see is this uh, repurposed as a country park and a heritage centre so that um, everyone can enjoy the green space that's there at the moment and really it wouldn't take much effort to make it into a country park. We've already got the perimeter tracks there which um, can be used as accessible walking trails, as cycling trails for families. Um, there's already a designated walk around the ancient woodland of Parkwood um, where you can see wild flowers and um, birds and I feel that would be wonderful to have the community um, able to come and enjoy that. This was land which was um, um, compulsorily acquired from local people, from the local farmers uh, during the Second World War um, and I feel it should be returned to the local community now. I'm Rosie Pearson, I'm a planning and environmental campaigner and I'm fighting to protect Wethersfield Airfield from the two mega prisons because of the wildlife and habitats that are on it. Uh, it's huge, it's unspoilt, it's rewilded and it should be kept for people and for wildlife to enjoy for future generations uh, as well as preserving the heritage and the history associated with the site. Essentially the airfield is a greenfield site, um, it's open grassland, it's a haven for wildlife, there's loads of trees, there's all the Jubilee woodland and there's also the ancient woodland of Parkwood. Um, and I feel that that's something that should be shared with everyone. I am calling for public bodies to get together and to buy the land to give it back to people instead and to the wildlife that lives there. Also, the, the airfield has a you know rich and diverse history. Um, it was used in the Second World War, it was later used in the Cold War, um, and, and this, this is something which I don't feel should be lost. It's something which needs to be remembered um, and having a heritage trail there where people can come, they can walk around and see the old buildings on the site. Um, I feel it's very important for, the, for us to remember the history, to remember the service men and women that served there. There are lots of buildings up there, there are the, which um, are of interest for people to come and see, which were used both during the Second World War and the Cold War. So there's the Victor Alert hangars. Now these are the uh, these are Cold War hangars, and they were they housed bomber aircraft um, during the Cold War, and they were built in that style so they could be disguised as barns, so that um, the enemy wouldn't know that they were there. I understand that they're the only ones remaining in Europe. Um, there's also the, the first American military chapel built outside of the U.S., um, and there was until very recently a museum there, which which celebrated, remembered and commemorated the history of the airfield um, and the people that served there. All the memorabilia from that museum is still, is still boxed up and waiting to go back to the airfield so others can learn about the history and enjoy that. Ross Stewart has been running the museum at Wethersfield Airfield until just a few weeks ago. There has always been Americans that turn up at the gate or have written to the MOD police asking to visit the airfield because they have a relative or they served there or they lived there or they went to school there. Well, it's not surprising as more than 4,000 GIs married local girls, so they have family in that area. They visit 
the air base to show the grandkids where to meet grandma. In 2014, a letter from Carol Zimmer found its way to the Chief Constable, Alf Hitchcock. She was requesting to scatter her late husband Bruce Zimmer's ashes on the airfield. She explained that she was from Braintree and had married the Air Force mechanic in 1961. On visits home from the USA in 2005 and 2008, they had been refused entry to the base. Bruce's last wishes were to have his ashes scattered on the base. The Chief Constable agreed to this and enlisted my help. So I volunteered for the role as visitor host. And then the visitors that came brought and sent memorabilia. And by 2015, the Wethersfield Airfield Museum was created. There's parallels between another um, XRAF site, which is Greenham Common in Berk, Berkshire, and um, Wethersfield here. Um, and that was, um, the MOD vacated that in 1993. And in 2000, that was opened up for the public to enjoy. And there you can now see there's um, nature trails, there's a Cold War trail showing the uh, the points of interest, Cold War, old Cold War buildings, parts of the runway. Um, there's also a cafe there, an information centre, and the parallels between this and Wethersfield are quite striking. And to see something wonderful like that happen in Wethersfield would be absolutely brilliant. What's there already, the wildlife, the military history, that on its own, that's all, all wonderful and people would enjoy um, coming to see that. But we could also develop it further. Um, there are other ideas that local people have suggested that they'd like to see um, camping pods there to be used as um, respite breaks for servicemen and women and their families um, who are serving today. Um, I think it would be a wonderful space to have a community garden um, and I'm sure there'd be lots of local people who would want to volunteer to come and run that to share their skills with others. If you look around the surrounding area it's absolutely stunning. Um, some of the best countryside in the southeast. And you're going to have the ugliest buildings of the highest on the highest plateau a mile wide. To imagine the scale of buildings that are going to be on this site is, is just, it, you know, it, it blows your mind. It's incredibly hard to find any reason for this. You, you couldn't probably think of a worse place geographically um, to put it. The, the, the one and only positive I can see from this is it's really brought um, a community of people together. During the Cold War, this, uh, a lot of Americans came over and they were serving here alongside the British. Um, a lot of them married British people, so there's a very much a, a, a strong bond there between the Americans and the British that were serving here. And I think that's something which we need to remember um, and commemorate the people that were serving here, some of who flew out and never returned again. Once the new owners of the airfield are known, we will be among the first to put forward our aspirations and plans for the future. Let's make sure that the heritage of Wethersfield Airfield is never forgotten, a promise made to all those who gave their lives. Um, and that's a piece of history which I want my children to, to learn about and which I don't think we should forget. <laughs>